Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to give you a demonstration how to build capacitors. You can see there before I build capacitors, I'm going to get back to the Tesla coil a little bit there and how you build them. Uh, you know, uh, IPEF will be used um, between uh, 22 to 30 gauge. I wouldn't go any really higher than 30 gauge on your secondary winding. Now uh, it's magnet wire uh, that you're using on this there, like I was just, uh, just saying they're engaged between you know, 022 and 30 gauge. Now your windings, you don't want any more than, I wouldn't put any more than 2000 turns and no less than 1200 turns, you know, between your uh, winding gauge. Like uh, uh, this one right here is about 12, 1300 turns uh 26 gauge uh now um i wasn't able to get a full one pound spool and that's going to be my second uh build of my uh, secondary uh i had to do this in uh three uh three uh quarter pound uh 26 gauge uh wire spools uh and i and you i joined the after four or five turn 500 turns i joined them together uh even though i did a good job doing it it's not it's not a good coil uh it's really good to have a coil completely wound with no joints and you know that way it's completely tight together and uh, there's no chances of um, uh, arcing between uh, the coils. You gotta remember these. Uh, you're you're stepping up the coil uh, thousands of volts, and every turn, you know, uh, it can be you know 500 to a thousand volts uh, between every couple of turns that you're stepping up uh, the voltage. Uh, when you're vibrating these things, because when you're when they're working right, you know you're stepping up the voltage at hundreds of thousands to uh, close to a million volts or more. So um, you want your coil to be really tight and uh, wound straight, no overlapping, and also you know four or five nice coats of uh, varnishes uh, or uh, you know some type of uh, good. Um, insulating urethane or something that will um, will protect the coil uh, insulated better uh, from uh, arcing or sparking uh, or arcing through to the from the toroid here to the to the coil itself um, so that's that uh, now we go capacitors uh, when you're building your capacitors We'll get going over here and just show you some capacitors. I use uh, just vapor barrier. You can buy this at like, any hardware store, Home Depot or um, or uh, Canadian Tire or so forth. You know, uh, and uh, you cut your sheets out evenly. You know, you use a piece of pipe. You cut your pipe out to a certain length. I do my pipes at 15 inches. Uh, reason being is uh, the foils. I guess they're about I don't know 12 inches. And it leaves me, you know, about a half to three quarters of an inch uh, space on each side for the, the insulator. Now, between the insulator, as you can see, there's a foil at the bottom. And there's a foil on top. And you have an insulator at the bottom, foil, insulator, foil. Uh, I'm going to put a wire on this there. But you can see there's a wire at the bottom foil. I've got to put a wire on this one. Just like that, but on the other side of it. Because when you roll it, you got to have a wire on that side and you have a wire on the other side. So when it's all rolled up nice and tight, uh, the both ends stick out on each side of uh, the pipe. Like what you see on my capacitor bank that, uh, that I built over there. And uh, also when you build the capacitors, yeah, it's really good to put your 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 connections at the ends and you want good long strands you want your strands spread out as much as you can when you tape uh, uh, you tape your uh, con uh, your um, conductor to the foil now uh, you want to put your wires in the center uh, of your whatever length that you roll and you want all your lengths like I was telling you to be all the same and the same lengths when you build your capacitors uh, before you uh, roll it, you want all the air to be uh, taken out. So I usually just, you know, take the pipe that I cut. You know, uh, this is an inch and a half pipe. 
and uh, I just roll it over it before I actually uh, roll it right here. I tape it to the, um, you know, I tape all the plastics over the, the pipe. Then I just start rolling and rolling and rolling till it's all rolled up. But yeah, uh, it's important that you want a nice, clean, even roll uh, when you roll this. So uh, you, you patiently roll it. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, that's how a capacitor is built. Uh, th now the insulator, uh, that's a very important thing. Like th this, the thickness of this insulator from what I see from the vapor barrier point of view, the, this thickness is, um, is good for no more. I wouldn't push any more than four or 5,000 volts. Now, if you want to build capacitors up to 10, 15,000 volts, uh, for your systems because you have um, you know, a, a transformer that's in the 10 15,000 volt range me I'm using two mots at 2,000 volts a piece uh, Together uh, they're four they're four thousand because they're linked together uh, with two of the capacitors in series uh, So yeah, so that's a very important thing there with your insulator um, it's a it's a it's a miss and hit thing there when you're building capacitors. Uh, I I've learned from experience there that uh, pushing over the four or five thousand volts on the, this type of insulator, uh, it it will burn through. So um, you would double up your insulator uh, if you want to build in the higher voltage range uh, with your capacitors. Uh, there you have it, folks. Uh, uh, you can see capacitors and um, as I was just getting back to the uh, high voltage um, Tesla coil like um, yeah I'm building up a new secondary uh, that's my next job uh, I, I've been enjoying this but I want to get uh, I'm gonna build up a better secondary with uh, a little more turns because this one like I was saying is 12 1300 I want to get close to 2000 turns with a 26 gauge and I'm going to also build a better uh, primary. Uh, this primary, probably, it's it, well, it's 14 gauge and it's turned around a uh, four inch PVC. I mean ABS pipe. Uh, this one has 15 turns. I, I bought 12 gauge uh, wire, um, and I'm going to wrap that instead. Uh, I think it's going to work better, uh, and I'm going to do a little bit more turns instead of the 15 turns. I'm going to do I think about 22 to 24 turns and uh, the pipe is going to be further up so when you do your primary you really got to be sure that you have a good space uh, you know even more than this uh, between your primary and your secondary because you, your primary uh, your secondary will jump and arc to the primary because uh, of the high voltage rating that you're creating with the um, the oscillation that you're doing the the frequencies and the vibration that you're creating with this Tesla coil that it, it will jump through and uh, I call them spiders uh, it's it's very uh, when when that happens there it, it's not good because what happens the when this jumps to the primary the high voltage from your secondary will actually go through uh, your capacitors and actually uh, over over overpower your capacitors and and cause them to short uh, because of the feedback so you do not when you see your 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 secondary jumping to your primary you shut it off right away because you'll end up blowing out your capacitors especially if your capacitors are not protected with like i was telling you with uh oh i didn't actually didn't say <laughs> tell you guys but yeah you can put in line resistors with your capacitors um or uh diodes for that matter um you'll get less of a, a surge to your primary because the thing is you want the maximum uh, surge out of your capacitors because uh, your capacitors are playing ping pong back and forth with your primary uh, as the rotary spark gap here spins around and discharges so as this spins and uh, arcs on the, in between as you can see when it hits this point and it discharges 
it's discharging the capacitors into the primary. So it's paying ping pong back and forth and that's playing, making a surge. So like if you're building your capacitors properly, uh, and they're will about uh, and they're in their voltage ratings and stuff like that, uh, and they're also in their variable preference and their uh, uh, percentage. Uh, every capacitor, uh, like if you see a microwave capacitor, can have a rating between three and five percent. You want a higher percent uh, value because the, the the higher percent values of on capacitors when you even when you build them, uh, these ones are uh, when they're built well they're close to ten percent, and that's a good value for uh, Tesla coil uh, discharge capacitors. They're high discharge capacitors, and that's what you want to build. Um, you can even build these capacitors even better by actually keep putting, doing your foils and putting one further out, but you'll lose capacitance that way. But you can actually take your foils and instead of at one end, push it out and join all the foils together. As you're turning, turning the foil, it all clamps together. Uh, on each side because one one side is push, push that way of the foil on the bottom foil and the top foil is pushed that way and, and when you're rolling it it's actually crumpling uh, you know let me say a quarter inch on each side from the top foil to the bottom foil and it's crimping it all together and the capacitor can handle uh, the discharge better uh, without uh, disrupting the the field and getting actually uh, arcing through because uh, uh, what happens is your capacitor over its if you don't make it to a certain value and it's taking over its value rating because of all the capacitance it's discharging to your primary uh, the surge will actually surge right through your capacitors and eventually melt the insulator and um, and blow your capacitors. Now capacitors, um, if you build them good, you know, capacitors can take uh, a bit of hits through the insulator and actually heal itself, uh, especially on the, whatever uh, the special um, insulators that you're using for your capacitors. So that's another thing that, uh, just to let you know, a uh, capacitor can take, uh, you know, half a million hits uh, before it actually uh, shorts through and burns itself out. Uh, they're really tiny little tiny pinholes uh, that it makes and it doesn't uh, usually uh, damage the capacitor till it gets really big the holes uh, and a lot of times it can heal itself uh, uh, as it actually creates a hit through uh, the, the foil I mean through the insulator well there you go uh, folks uh, I'll show you after it's wound uh, the, the, the capacitance on this uh, capacitor that I, that I make uh, like I said it's a uh, hundred uh, it's usually about a hundred nanofarad rating you want them all the same um, the insulators I'm using on this it, it's a little uh, I changed up my capacitor like I, I was telling you I, I had at first I was using thinner insulator than this and I was blowing capacitors so I stepped it up and I changed all pretty much all my capacitors now I have maybe one or two or three on there that has the thinner one that's supposedly it's just I guess as it was better um, wrapped that it uh, and evenly wrapped that it's not actually arcing through or it's about or they could be just about to go who knows so there you have it folks uh, yeah um, this is how you build capacitors uh, the cheap way at home uh, if you get back to my channel and I'll show you more on how to hook up transformers and show how to hook up balusters and I'll show you a little bit of how to do uh, resistance check and uh, series circuits, parallel circuits. Uh, I can explain to you pretty much uh, everything on uh, how to build these systems. Uh, but for now, uh, there you go, folks. Uh, it has how you build capacitors.